Well, it's kind of hard when, when they line up all the uh, specials to, to always follow uh, the young people, really, because, I mean, what, what am I going to, I can't, I can't give them a hard time because, you know, they're young people and they'll, they'll figure something out, but, but if you were, if you were wondering about that refrigerator door, why don't you keep wondering about that and we'll, we'll, I'll go, I'll go into that, if I remember, ha, <laughs> um, at, ha, at the, at the end of the, the, the message uh, tonight, is, so I, I want to definitely be clear about, about what that is about, and, and I know I'm a needy person sometimes, so I'm just going to remind Brother Chris uh, when he's ready to don't forget to display the the uh, pictures on the video that's streamed as well. So I know, I know he's he's shaking his head, thinking I gotta do 500 other. Well, maybe not 500. Maybe maybe a dozen other things that he's got going on. So, but but I just I just. Notice that that uh, when I when I talk about something on the screen, that when we stream it, people necessarily can't see what I'm talking about. And I like to use uh, pictures or graphics or or visuals just for something that well gives some some gives people something to look at besides me. Right? I don't like to be center of attention, but unfortunately, you, you have me tonight and. And the, the old proverb, a picture is worth a thousand words, is, is a very true statement. So I can say, I uh, hope you had a great 4th of July. And, and I could just show this picture and you could think about everything that happened yesterday. Maybe you had a good 4th of July, maybe you didn't have a good 4th of July. But, but if you didn't, well, here's a, here's a nice picture saying, happy 4th of July. So there it is. <laughs> okay. All right, we're official. Okay, I'm slow also. I don't know what you mean. Okay, anyway, I'll move on from there. Oh. I, I, he's, he's pointing at me, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I know. Like, way back when, when, when the <laughs> government of Illinois said, hey, you can't have church service if you have more than 10 people. I was used to him, used to Brother Chris coming out and, and, and doing, doing this. He'd have his little fake headset on. Well, I, I guess it really wasn't fake, but he'd have his, his headphones on and he'd come out with this clipboard. He, it's like my producer saying, and then he'd come out and, and do his five, four, three, two, one, when we were going to go live with the, the stream. And and then they got it to where they had this nice as I the only way I know how to describe it is a robot sound, this robot sound when I know that I'm live and I need to not be kind of goof around, but yes. So with Brother Chris pointing at me, I had no idea what he was doing because I was used to to that. Anyway, um, welcome uh, to those that are online or those that will be watching online and welcome to everyone here. So the only thing that's going to happen is uh, we're not going to have the sides of the church go one way or the other. Uh, the thing I have to worry about is if the, we tip forward or everybody tips back this way, since that's a pretty cool thing. So you don't know what I'm talking about, but it self high five, by the way. What I did is a self high five. If you feel like it, you know, what I just did was, hey, that was pretty, that was pretty good. That was pretty neat. Just reach those arms up there, self high five. Because, you know, when you get older, trying to pat yourself on the back, you can kind of, ow, you know, you get that, you got shoulder going to get back there. But you can do self high five. Anyway, 
I haven't even started, and that's a bad sign. I have somebody going like this to me, like, get going. And let's get going. So um, I do want to preface this. This uh, Bible school starts uh, tomorrow. We don't know what to expect. So we would rather have um, more helpers than uh, not enough helpers. So if you can help, uh, tomorrow uh, show up because I don't know what we're going to have tomorrow because we weren't able to, to plan appropriately this year like we have in other years because of, of something that we can't see. So I would encourage you if you can, if you can help uh, for Bible school, you can show up and I know there will probably be stuff outside so you don't even have to come indoors. So um, tonight, we're going to start Bible school a little bit early because we're going to read the Bible. So we're going to go over a, a, just uh, something from the Bible. Just, um, and if you, you didn't, uh, we weren't able to be here this morning uh, or the last couple uh, weeks, uh, Brother Nathan has brought some good messages. Uh, makes you think... And sometimes people don't like thinking, especially during the summer. But um, I would encourage you, if you, you haven't, um, it's on the Facebook or YouTube or, or whatever social media platform that, that Brother Nathan posts on. Very good about, um, about euthanasia from this morning and also uh, the previous week about truly the last bastion of systemic uh, racism in America. So very good, uh, very good um, to be informed of and, and the word of God is preached. So tonight we're going to start in the book of Matthew chapter 7. So we're just going to read uh, the first uh, five verses out of Matthew chapter 7. So Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 1, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the beam, excuse me, let me start at verse number 3, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye, thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we just thank you again for, for just our, our breath and our life and, and our capacity that we have to be here. And and just for the, the life that you, you've given to us. And we just pray for, for your word as, as we read it, that it can be uh, an encouragement or even an, an exhortation or admonishment to us that, that we can just learn from your word and, and just learn to be more like you, Jesus. And we ask this in, in your name. Amen. So we're not going to... Not going to uh, stay on in, in Matthew too long tonight, but this portion of Scripture is from uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And right here we have some of the most often misused or, or kind of not used correctly um, uh, verses or what people think of as verses being from the Bible about, about judging. And that's something that I've titled the uh, message tonight uh, is a... The cancel culture. Uh, we, we are in a society that is uh, nicknamed the cancel culture. If, if you say the slightest bit of something wrong, you are, in their thinking, wrong. Let me, let me clarify that. If, if you say something or do something that is in their, you know, you always are supposed to find they, but they being somebody else in this case, if you say something wrong, you're in their thinking, you're, you're wrong, you need to change, you're done. You're done for, you're canceled, you're no good. And furthermore, not only are, 
are you wrong and you're canceled. I'm not ever going to listen to you and you need to go away. You need to change, but, but you need to change to their point of view or their thinking. And, and people are so judgy today. Judgy is probably not a word, but I think you understand what I, what I mean by people uh, are just ready to judge without hearing the conclusion of the whole matter. They just hear one portion of the story they, it, that fits their narrative and they're ready to go, you know what, you need to get fired, you need to be canceled, we need to remove you, unless if you start thinking like we do. And right here we have Jesus' definition of, of biblical judgment, or, or I, would, I would give another word to that, so I don't want to be, I don't want to confuse what Jesus taught versus what I want to just say, I want to use uh, discernment. You know, I, I want to be uh, discerning. I certainly, Jesus said that, judge not that ye be not judged. Well, I want people to be judged. I want the bad people to be judged, and I want the good people to be judged. So that's not kind of what I'm going for tonight, because good or bad is going to be canceled. And I, I, I know I've, I've kind of taken that and, and just I've kind of drawn a line. We're in a cancel culture tonight. And, and one of the things that... that um, that I've kind of uh, run across today is I just can't, it's just part of the cancel culture. Um, I'm going to, uh, for those that, that can't quite tell, again, you do something on a computer, it's always, it's always better right here than when it's out further away. But that's, uh, that is a, a monument that uh, there is a movement afoot to uh, tear down. It's, it is the uh, Emancipation uh, uh, monu Memorial, the Emancipation Memorial, or it's also known as the Freed Man's Memorial, or the Emancipation Group uh, Monument. And it's a, a monument in uh, Lincoln Park in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Washington, D.C. So uh, <clears throat> that's what it is. And I forget, well, I know who the president was, but I forget the the. Uh, the um, the person they they uh, modeled the the sculpture at I forget his name, but but I just kind of want to pause there to describe a monument, since everybody has seen news recently about people tearing down uh, statues, tearing down monuments, defacing them, you know, putting graffiti everywhere, and and what a monument is according to Webster's 1828 dictionary, anything. Anything by which the memory of a person or an event is preserved or perpetuated. So let me give the definition again real quick of a monument. Anything by which the memory of a person or of an event is preserved or perpetuated. And unless if you don't have uh, access to a, a newspaper or to the internet or to TV or something, um, you would you would be like, yeah, we've seen we've seen stuff tore down by by people that are protesting, which they're actually, in my definition, that would more like be a riot than a protest. But but they're tearing these monuments down, and I'm not here to defend some of these monuments. I don't know. They may be. It may be time to consider removing them. I don't know. But what I do know is that the majority of them are unlawfully pulled down. Okay? They're unlawfully pulled down. And if they're not pulled down, <clears throat> they're vandalized, which vandalism is never lawful. Okay? So whatever is happening is not lawful. But in particular, the, the immense... <clears throat> The emancipation, uh, the emancipation Memorial, I had this problem uh, a few weeks ago where I couldn't say, I couldn't say that word, and what was that word I couldn't say? I don't remember. So I blocked that whole thing out of my mind, right? Which is, which is good, but the emancip Emancipation Memorial 
is what they have aimed at to tear down next, to remove, because it's offensive. It's offensive, okay. Well, what's offensive about it? I'm going to use scripture, judge not, that ye be not judged, okay. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So, this monument, and I didn't know this until, until I looked at a little bit about the history of this monument. The Emancipation uh, Memorial that is in uh, Lincoln Park, that is in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Washington, D.C., this monument uh, faced uh, the, the Capitol, which is uh, interesting in and of itself. But what do they want primarily to do with this? It's because of the, the man that is, that is seen uh, there. He's, he's uh, moving his hand up, he's lifting up, and he's looking up at the the Emancipation uh, Proclamation that was uh, signed by President Lincoln saying we're not going to allow slavery in, the, in our country. So this is a freed man's memorial also. This man sees and hears what President Lincoln is describing as you're no longer a slave. Nobody can own you anymore in this country. That is illegal. Okay, to me, I kind of understand what that is about. Some people think that is offensive. And the thing that I don't think they know, which I didn't know, is this is a monument and it's designed to, quote, preserve or perpetuate uh, the memory of a person or at a, of an event. So. They want to remove the event of the abolishment of slavery in the United States of America by President uh, Lincoln. And they want to remove the monument that was the primary, uh, not the monument itself, but slavery was the primary reason why America had a civil war. They want to remove this portion of history because that seems a little offensive, but they don't understand that's so we know we will never have slavery here in the United States of America again because we said no to slavery and the 13th Amendment was born out of the Civil War. Which, here's the neat thing about this. According to the National Park Service, this monument was paid for solely, solely, by former slaves. So they want to tear down the people that this freed. They want to tear down this monument. Think about that. This monument was paid for solely, 100% by slaves that had been freed by the Emancipation Proclamation or by the the 13th Amendment that was passed. Think about it. They want to tear this down. With what, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. I think we're seeing a lot of judging in America, and I think we're seeing a lot of judging coming upon those that are judging how they judge. So we can find a... a Parallel, or we can find an example uh, also from the Bible about a monument or about a memorial. And, and well, you've already figured out it's Joshua chapter 4. And and I'm still going to read. I had down to read all of Joshua chapter 4. So we're still going to read all of Joshua chapter 4. Because it's, it's summertime. And we got, we got time. We have time to read the word of God to, to kind of go over this cancel culture, this cancel culture that, that wants to, to forget the same, the, the very thing that was 
uh, put in a monument to preserve the memory of by the same people that was freed by it. So in Joshua chapter 4, we're just going to read the entirety of it. So if you'll bear with me, um, we'll come back and read uh, a couple of verses uh, that we want to focus in on. Joshua chapter 4. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take ye twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take ye hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had appointed of the children of Israel, out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan. As the Lord spake unto Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priest, which bear the ark of the covenant, stood, and they are there unto this day. For the priests, which bear the ark, stood in the <clears throat> middle of the Jordan every until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to, to speak. Under the people, according to, let me start over, verse 10. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua, and the people hasted and passed over. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over, that the ark of the Lord passed over, and the priests in the presence of the people and the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel, and Moses spake unto them. About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord on the battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. The Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony, that they come up out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. And it came to pass, when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the, <clears throat> out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up unto the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned into their place, unto their place, and flowed over all his banks as they did before. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal, in the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land, for the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until ye were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. So a lengthy portion of, of reading, but... It's very important that we got all the context of this memorial that was set up. And, and the key verses there that I just want to draw your attention to is verse 6 and 7. And that this may be a sign 
among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye by these stones? So it's like, what's this monument here for? What's this, what's this monument here for? Well, if people that are judging had their way, there would be no monument, no remembrance of, of the Emancipation Proclamation or of the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery in the United States. If these people had their way, boom, gone. Or it's probably right about here. Poof, gone. That's the same thing that we read here in the book of Joshua, is that, hey, what are these stones for? Oh, well, let me tell you, here's what they're for. Verse 7, Then ye shall answer to them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And, you know, it's one thing when God says something once that should be good enough for us just to hear something once, but God says something twice in this chapter. He says, hey, when you're... Children are going to ask what these stones are for. They're going to say, this is a memorial for what I did for you. What I, when you passed over with the Ark of the, the Testimony or the Ark of the Covenant, you passed through Jordan, which was overflowing its banks at this time of the year. Everybody passed over on dry ground. Just as, just as I did for the children of Israel at the Red Sea. This is the same thing that happened. And when your kids ask you, what's this for? This, these are what this is for. It's because the Lord God is mighty and we should fear the Lord. The, this memory is now preserved in this memorial of stones, just as the memory of a freed man looking up knowing that he now can enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in this country, just as that freed man was looking up. That's the reason why we have a monument. And you know, this cancel culture, we're, gonna, we're just going to hit some people, not literally hit. <laughs> we're gonna, I'm just going to show you some people, and just some people that got canceled. I... I will say I neither agree or disagree with some of these people. Most people I don't agree with. But, <clears throat> but I've just said before, good and bad can be canceled because we're in a cancel culture. I, uh, no, I didn't like that. I tuned you out. You're canceled. You need to change your way of, th you need to change your way of thinking. This lady, uh, Fiona uh, Moriarty uh, McLaughlin, um, some of you may... Uh, not know the name, but you know what she did. She posed for a photograph doing, quote, community service. She went over, borrowed a power drill, and, and pretended like she was helping board up some places after some riots. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, protest, otherwise known as riots, uh, in California. Well, <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the short 15-second clip of her holding the drill, taking the picture, and, and her running off, uh, got her canceled. She, she had just finished uh, college, and she had an internship, and the company that handles journalist uh, <clears throat> internship canceled her. They canceled her and said, um, actually, we're doing this for the safety of where you're going to work, because what, what you did, people found offensive. Canceled. She got canceled. Another lady, uh, <clears throat> Leslie Neal uh, Boylan. I'm going to read. I'm going to read. She she's a dean of uh, was was a dean of a uh, nursing program at a, a college out on the East Coast. I'm just going to read a portion of of a lengthy uh, lengthy uh, email that she sent out to her nursing students. I know there are some some people that have. Uh, that are nurses here, that might be nurses online. This, remember, this is a dean of the nursing program for this, this college. Quote, I despair for our future as a nation if we do not stand up against violence against anyone. Black lives matter, but also everyone's life matters. That's exactly 
what a nurse would say. One person, one person posted that back to the school's, the university's Twitter account. One person caused an investigation and uh, Leslie uh, lost her job over that. The, the statement, everyone's life matters. Three words, lost her job over it, canceled. I don't, I, I don't agree with that. You can't put that in that. And you, I read the Twitter post, one person caused this investigation and a, a, a nurse who's supposed to take care of everybody can't say everyone's lives matters. Canceled. Sorry, you're fired. Here's another one. Click. There we go. I don't agree with, uh, I don't agree with this guy uh, for the most part, and I probably haven't seen a lot of his movies, but, but uh, Mike, or Marion Michael Morrison, Marion Michael Morrison, uh, known professionally as John Wayne, and uh, nicknamed Duke, was an American actor, director, producer, and I didn't know this, a Presidential Medal of Freedom recipient. Okay, I received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. So, so that's a little bit more than just being a famous actor, okay? <clears throat> and he, he was, uh, you know, top, of the, the box office draws for, for, you know, around three decades and very famous for, you know, his role in Westerns. You know, everybody, I think, oh, well, at least my age and, and uh, probably know who, who uh, John Wade is. So, yeah, so, some don't, but anyway, very, <clears throat> very famous actor. But you know what? He gave an interview he gave an interview in 1971. I got to do the math. That's 39 plus 20, so 59 years ago. 59 years ago, okay. In 1971, he gave an interview, and one of the questions he was asked was about white supremacy. I read the statement that he gave as an answer, and I'm like, okay, it's like, that's like a political answer nowadays where you, you, you talked a whole lot, but you didn't really answer the question. So uh, because of that, they're, they're, they want to rename the, the John Wayne Airport in Orange County, California. Didn't give a right answer. Let's cancel him. Let's rename everything af that's named after him or after his character. Canceled. Didn't, didn't answer your question right. Canceled. But you know what? This cancel culture isn't anything new. You know, for, this, for the sake of time, um, Amos. Amos is one of the first, um, it, <clears throat> he's one of the first prophets, um, but you know, people categorize him as a minor prophet, but he was one of the first prophets um, to, uh, to actually go up to the nation of of Israel or to the northern kingdom of Samaria. And real quick, I just want to show you. Um, Amos was from this town right here, Tekoa, who was right next to Jerusalem, and Bethel, which is right there, so very close to Jerusalem. And I kind of give you the how many miles uh, Tekoa was from Jerusalem. And also, I don't know why I have how many miles uh, from Bethlehem down there, but uh, six miles, 12 miles south of Jerusalem, very close to Bethel. Bethel was, was part of the, the northern kingdom, and, and Amos was from the southern kingdom of Judah. And the Lord said, you know what? I want you to go up to, to the nation of Israel or to the northern kingdom, and I want you to tell them that they're doing wrong and they, they need to repent. They need to remember the Lord their God, and they need to repent. And in the book of Amos, we'll read the interaction that, that Amos got doing this. Okay, so Amos was just doing what God had told him to do. In Amos chapter 7, starting at verse 10, Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel sent to Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in, in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. 
For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Then answered Amos, and said unto Amaziah, I was... No prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman, and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. Now therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, Prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thy wife shall be an harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and the land shall be divided by line. Now shall die in a polluted land, and Israel so shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. In other words, whoa, Amos, you've been telling us all these things. We don't like, we don't like your message. We're doing just fine up here in our nation of Israel. Stop what you're doing. We don't like your message. Go back home. Let me, let me warn you, these words here, this is the king's court. And it's the king's chapel. I've got the authority of the king. If you don't heed me, you're probably going to die by my hand. And you're canceled, Amos. Go back home. Well, we can read the Bible, and we know that the Lord did indeed bring judgment to the, the, the ten tribes of the nation of Israel, but they didn't like his message, canceled. Click. My clicker isn't working. Can we go to the next slide, please? That's the last one. Oh, I seriously, oh, man. Okay, fine, that's the last one. Um, that's why it wasn't going forward, because it was the last one. <laughs> it's almost like, I, yeah, anyway, not the first time, not the first time it's happened over in, in Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah. Over in Jeremiah, and, and I'll read these real quick, but I did warn you that it's summer, and I know most of you don't have anything to do tomorrow. Right. It's that Bible school. Come back for Bible school. Jeremiah chapter 37. We'll read just a couple of verses there real quick. This is talking about Jeremiah. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the ward was there, whose name was Erijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he took Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. Then said Jeremiah, It is false. I fall not away to the Chaldeans, but he hearkened not to him. So Elijah took Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. Wherefore, the princes were wroth with Jeremiah, smote him, and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. Jeremiah, you're a traitor. Canceled. You're canceled. No, 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 I'm not. Jeremiah, if you, if you had listened to Jeremiah, Jeremiah was just saying, saying follow, follow God. But, but no. They thought, Arijah, and I'm, I'm not getting the name pronunciation correct, but he's like, you're a traitor. And that's all that mattered to them was, yeah, you're a traitor. We're going to put you in prison. You're canceled. Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22. This is Paul's uh, defense that he gave to uh, his people, to the, the nation of Israel. He, he gave this speech in Hebrew. And as soon as he was speaking in Hebrew, everybody calmed down and they're like, you know what? He's speaking our language. So he is, he is Jewish. Acts 22, verse 21 We'll, we'll just skip to this 
And he said unto him, and he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee for far hence unto the Gentiles. Canceled. Soon as they heard one word. What word did they hear? Gentiles. Canceled. And immediately, immediately they're like protesting. <laughs> Or what we would call a, a riot. And immediately they were like, away, you know, away. You know, he, one word, you know, if you, don't, if you don't hear what God is telling me, God's already told me, he's going to send me to the Gentiles. Canceled. One word, canceled. Acts 4.18. I have to beat some of you there. You probably already, some of you are probably beat me there. For, Acts 4.18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, <clears throat> at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. This is Peter and John. Don't teach in the name of Jesus. One name. Canceled. What you're doing, don't preach in the name of Jesus. Don't teach in the name of Jesus. You're canceled if you do. Well, praise God that from Amos to Jeremiah to, to Paul or Saul of, of Tarsus to, to Peter and John, that they continue to, to preach God's word and to, to preach the name of Jesus Christ and his teachings. And that's actually the end of what we're going over for cancel culture. But I wanted to tell you that the name of Jesus, that Peter and John were told, you're canceled if you speak or teach in that name. That is what the refrigerator door song is about. Because Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God, and that was what was drawn and placed on the refrigerator door. And some of us may know the, what the Lamb of God is and who the Lamb of God is. And that's Jesus Christ of Jesus of Nazareth, who is the Christ of God. This is Jesus is is uh, what this Bible is about. Jesus is the Bible because we know he is the word of God and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. This this same Jesus was prophesied about. He came lived a he was born of a virgin. He lived a perfect, sinless life, something that I couldn't do, and I know you can't do either, because I can't. Nobody can. Nobody can, nobody can be perfect their whole lives except, except God. And Jesus Christ was God. He, he gave his life up willingly on the cross of Calvary. He became sin for us so that he can say, Father, forgive them. My blood is, the, is their, their redemption. The refrigerator door is pointing to an empty tomb because Jesus took his life back and then he presented himself a living sacrifice to our Father in heaven. And because by the name of Jesus, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, that's what the refrigerator door song is about. The refrigerator door is about the Lamb of God, about Jesus Christ, who has a gift of salvation, a gift that nobody can, nobody can get for themselves except they receive that gift. Because, as is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what the whole Bible is about. Man's, man's instructions to serve a holy God. And by it, we know that this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for, for knowing that that even though people get upset and judge without your judgment, Lord, we know that, that you judge back and you're a righteous judge. Shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? Lord, we know you will because you are fully good. 
You are 100% pure. You are 100% righteous. And Lord, we just thank you for, for being able to come to you and say, Father, forgive us. Help us and help us to, to make ourselves a, your temple that, that you're pleased to, to dwell with. And Lord, we just give the rest of this service to you. And Lord, we do pray for Bible school tomorrow that you can just, just use it for, for whatever purpose you have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're not going to cancel. We're not going to cancel the.